Hello everyone and welcome to Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. The Living Coast Discovery Center is a small nonprofit zoo and aquarium located down in Chula Vista. We are uniquely situated on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. And right now during this time, we are bringing you all kinds of different educational opportunities to learn about the native wildlife that calls San Diego home. Now, every day on Facebook, Monday to Friday, we are premiering videos at 11 a.m. So you can catch those live interactive videos here on Facebook, or you can rewatch them later on our YouTube channel. So be sure to share our YouTube and our Facebook events with those around you so that you can help spread our message all about nature and how you can help save our native resources. Now today we are actually going to be taking a little bit different of a focus. We've been learning about a lot of our different animals that call the Living Coast home and learning a lot about different aspects about this unique environment that the Living Coast is situated on. Now right now we are actually going to be learning about compost. Do you know what compost is? Well composting in short is going to be taking food, putting it into a pile, and creating soil. A couple of different things, but it's actually going to be a great way to be able to help reduce your food waste and help our planet. Now composting is going to be taking those food scraps, collecting them all together, letting them break down or decompose. In order for this to happen, we need some assistance. So we're going to go check out some of our decomposers that we have here on site at the Living Coast and learn a little bit about how those decomposers help break down that food. For our decomposers, we break them into three different groups. We talk about the FBI, the fungus, bacteria, and invertebrates. So right now I'm highlighting our worm bin here. So there are many ways to compost and one of the ways that you can do so is through a worm bin. Our worm bin actually helps to break down that organic food material and create soil through the process of different worms and other bugs and invertebrates and bacteria and fungus as well. So hopefully inside here, we'll be able to find a chance to see all different aspects. So in here, we have some shredded paper, but if you move that around a little bit, we'll be able to see we have the process of soil being created by the help of all these different animals inside of here, all these different organisms. So we have some sow bugs. We have some really small ones. We also have some worms in here. They're hiding deep down in here, but we have some of those worms. So the fungus and the bacteria and those invertebrates all work together. Here we go, here's some worms. So our invertebrates are gonna be the easy guys, especially if you've been paying attention to our videos here on Living Coast in your living room. You'll start to see all these videos are starting to become connected in different ways. So previously we learned about invertebrates. Do you remember what invertebrates are? Invertebrates are going to be those animals without a backbone, such as worms or crustaceans like we've talked about previously. So these invertebrates, those animals without a backbone can vary in size. So big ones like these worms to some of these tiny larval stages that we see down here or other organisms that are gonna be really small that we can't really see. We also are gonna be using bacteria to help make sure that to break down our environment, our soils up here. So the bacteria is gonna be in there, but this is not harmful bacteria that you're gonna find in there. It's going to be healthy. So it's going to be natural for it. And then we also will have things like fungus. Do you know what fungus is? It's gonna be things like mold, Looks like we got a little bit of it right here with this worm coming right over it. And things like that. So the FBI, the fungus, the molds. There we go, that's a good shot of some mold in there. You see that inside of that avocado shell? We have our bacteria, can't really see that. That's gonna be microscopic, but it's not gonna harm us. And then invertebrates. Oh look, there's another little earwig in there. So very important that we have our decomposers to break down this and material for us. So they're going to be eating those food scraps and in return they're going to poop. 
just like everybody does, and this actually creates that soil. Hey, Ashley, we have a question coming in. Yeah, what question? Uh, Richard asks, are snails okay in compost? If you That's need help, I can help you with this. <laughs> That's a great question. Well, snails are invertebrates, so I would assume yes, but Kat is our compost expert. <laughs> Luckily, she's here with me today. Yeah. So, so Kat, what do you think about that? <laughs> With snails in a worm bin or any other type of slug, they can actually become predators of the residue. So oh, good in a point. Worm bin, it's better to not have your snails or slugs in there and remove them if they start to pose a threat to the other worms in there. That's a great point. Snails would eat other animals, so you do have to make sure you're watching out for those. But if you don't have them in a worm bin, it's probably not that big of a yeah. deal. But if you have a worm bin and you're seeing some snails, you might want to remove those. So we talked about how they needed those, uh, the decomposers are going to break down the different things, but we didn't talk about what those different things are. What are some of the ingredients that you need to have in a compost bin? There are four main ingredients that need to be included inside of your compost bin, and we actually keep them in three different categories. One of them is going to be green. Greens are going to be anything that is going to be basically coming out of your kitchen. Any of those food scraps that you have, vegetable scraps, fruit scraps, things like that. That's what you want to use from your greens. So if you could put it in a bag and seal that bag and leave it alone, and if in a few days you come back and it's kind of liquidy, then that's going to be a green ingredient. So it can be things like coffee grounds and veggie scraps from your strawberry tops, your apple cores, things like that anything basically coming out of your kitchen, except for meat, cheeses, things like that, dairy products, we don't want those. We also need our browns. What do you guys think might be a brown category? What could be a brown ingredient? This one's a little bit trickier. The browns are gonna be things that we wanna use to help keep the compost pile dry or kind of dry it out a little bit. Browns also are what you're gonna to use to put on top to keep those critters out of it and reduce the smell that might be happening. It's gonna be things like twigs or sticks, leaves from your yard, or grass clippings wouldn't really be dry, but they could still be put in your compost pile. They're more in the green category, but still useful. Or things like straw. We have straw in all of our compost bins here at the Living Coast. And our last category is going to be the blues. It's gonna be water and air. We need water and air, so we need to make sure we keep it moist so it doesn't get too hot. And we, we also need it to be moist so all those invertebrates are able to move around and live inside of it. Because if you know anything about worms, you know they need a little bit more of that moisturized area because if it's too dry, their skin's gonna dry out too. Now for oxygen, we all know why we need oxygen, right? Oxygen is important for everybody. We need to breathe it. So therefore the oxygen needs to come into that compost pile to allow the bacteria to come in the anaerobic and the aerobic bacteria, we wanna make sure we have a nice combination of those two. So now that we know those different categories, we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna hold up some different pictures of some items and you guys are gonna let me know whether or not this item should go in our compost bucket, our landfill bucket, so our trash, or our recycling bucket. All right. Now I'm gonna try my best to show you guys these without any sun glare, but unfortunately there's no promises there. All right, so this one is a picture of some Swiss cheese. Which bucket do you think this belongs in? Recycling, landfill, or compost? Now Swiss cheese is gonna go in the landfill. How about some mixed plastic bottles? Looks like we got a milk jug, some shampoo bottles. Where do we think we should put our plastic bottles? Compost, recycling, or landfill? Don't mind my awkward arm shake. It's definitely gonna go in the recycling. All right, here, let's see. How about sticks? Where should we put some sticks? The sticks or twigs are definitely something you wanna put in your compost pile. How about eggshells? Where should we put eggshells? Eggshells are compostable, but if you have an egg carton, that goes in your compost bin as well. 
I always try to say it goes in recycling, but it doesn't. How about some salad greens? What do you think? Whoop, I lost one, that's okay. Salad greens are definitely something you can put in your compost bin, but you do wanna make sure that it's not covered in salad dressing. So if it's covered in dressing, it's soaked and all absorbed at that, then you wanna throw that in the trash. How about your leftover cheeseburger? Where do you think that goes? That would be an item for our trash can. How about some paper? Where do you guys think paper could go? So solid paper like this can go in your recycling bin, but if it's shredded paper, you could use that as a dry ingredient, as your brown, just like we did in our worm bin. How about a tea bag? Where do you guys think this goes? Tea bags are gonna be also be a compost item. So now that we know what composting is, why do you think compost is important? Why should we be doing this? Well, there are actually three different reasons why composting is very helpful for not only you, but for the environment. Number one is it actually helps reduce your waste at home. By taking all your food scraps and putting it into a bucket, you're taking that out of your trash can. Now this helps you reduce that trash waste that's going to the physical landfill, but it also helps you to reduce the smell of what your trash can might smell like inside. Because as those food scraps are inside of your trash can, they start to break down and they release those gases, and that's that smelly product that we often smell. Now if you take that out and you put your food scraps in a separate bucket to create a compost pile, that's going to reduce the amount of trash that you're sending to our landfill which ultimately will help reduce the amount of space we are using in our landfill areas. Second, compost creates soil. Soil is healthy and very nutritive. There's all these nutrients that are inside of compost and inside of the soil is what plants need in order to grow. Plants don't grow well in just plain dirt. If you've ever tried that before, you probably didn't have a very successful plant. So compost helps provide those nutrients to the plants so that more plants can grow and grow nice and strong. Now, the last reason why composting is important is actually because it also helps reduce pollution. Now you're probably thinking, how does compost help reduce pollution? Well, it can do so in a couple of different ways. One of the ways that it helps reduce pollution is that it is actually stopping pollution from entering into our air and our water, as well as just being out and about on our land. Compost reduces air pollution by decreasing the chemicals such as methane that get released into the atmosphere as they're broken down. Now, with water pollution, this one's a little bit trickier. It actually decreases runoff. Do you remember previously when we talked about watersheds and how when it rains, water comes through and it takes anything off the street? Well, that's the same with soils. So we're actually gonna get a chance to check this out today. So in front of me here, I have some different soil samples. This first one is actually just sand, like you would find at your beach. This next one is clay or dirt, which is gonna be the average amount that you would see in your backyard generally. So the average dirt, nothing really special, not nutritive at all. This third bottle is actually full of compost from our compost pile here. So this is finished compost soil. And this last one here is a combination of dirt and compost soil mixed together. Now, when it rains, the dirt and the soil, they can only absorb so much water. But once you have nutrients added to it and it's a healthier soil, you can see it add, take in more water. So let's watch. This, these have all been wet already as if it's already been raining a little bit. So we've had a little morning rain shower and now we're gonna see what happens when it rains in the afternoon, when we get more water. So as I pour some water into the sand, pretty much all the water just runs right off, right? nothing's really being absorbed into this. So it's pretty much just all falling right into that container. Now, when I dump it into the dirt one, the clay, we see a slightly slower process, but basically the same thing, right? And anything that might be sitting on top of these two different soils, that's gonna run off with that water as well. So any type of chemicals or any other pollutants like trash that might be sitting on top of these two types of dirt, all that's gonna run off into that water as well. Now with compost, compost is naturally able to absorb more water. And you can see it's a slower rate, right? It's taking in a little bit more. 
and you can see it's a little different from our sand, our soil and our sand over here. But now when you add them together with our clay and our compost mix, see how much slower that runoff is? It's going to mix together a little bit, but it's still going to come down. So it's not going to stop the water from running away. It's still going to take some things, but it's going to be a much slower rate than just our sand and our water. So this slow rate is what's going to happen. And this helps reduce pollutants that might be entering into our beaches, our rivers, our oceans. And those are all places that we like to go swimming. So I don't know about you, but I personally would rather go swimming in an area with cleaner water than dirtier water. Now, I hope you had a great time learning about compost with us today. Be sure to join us next time on Living Coast in Your Living Room. We'll see you next time.